Okay, Domain of the Nameless God, session number 17. Epilogue. Combat had effectively concluded, but the Nameless God in all its sinister waking glory was not far behind the team. As they ran the quarter mile slog back to the entrance of the unholy temple with warping dimensions, they found their eyes drawn to look towards the rising abomination, more by curiosity than compulsion. Several were able to maintain their composure. Some were pushed into sheer panic. But Leonala looked back and saw something massive that had pulled itself up from a millennial slumber. Her gaze found the middle of the thing. If it was in fact a thing at all, a purple throb from the abyss stared back at her, an infinite vastness of stars surrounded by the strange chitinous mass of teeth. Her mind, already shattered by the trauma of the past week, was not able to bear the horror of the impending doom rising from the abyss. In a moment, Leonala's mouth opened in a silent scream. Her hair turned white and her heart stopped. She collapsed to the ground, dead. The rest of the group gathered the two surviving children and left Lee's body to be consumed by the nameless god. It was an hour after that, that the old arch slowly climbed into view, pursued by the void itself and remembering the beast that lurked in this place, the team did not even hesitate as they ran through, buying themselves valuable time. As they continued the next stretch, which was a full 18 hours of blackened forest, their terrified enthusiasm faltered only to prepare their lights and occasionally adjust their path to avoid the resonant sounds of chimes that seemed to now spot their journey at random. The trees gradually shifted to become more sparse again and the temperature rose as they reached the strange and mysterious liquid that forced their pace to slow. More than 36 hours since their last rest, drudging through, they continued through the muck for two more hours, an eerie silence hanging in the air. That could have been the case since they left the chimes and cackling trees behind, but they only just now noticed the silence. Two hours later, even further, the terrain shifted back to those dark blues, browns, greens, and vibrant purples. Their limbs, were, their limbs burned, their shoes had found wear and torn, their feet were raw, throbbing and aching as the next and final archway came into view. They did not hesitate as they passed, continuing down past the dense purple, orange, and gray vegetation. When the party finally stopped from exhaustion, they quickly realized that Lee had been left behind. And Quinn, in anger, attacks madly with her murderous dagger, and Sudi attempts, attempted to tackle her to the ground. During the fight, Quinn's sister screamed out in pain as her eyes and ears began to bleed and she fell unconscious. Nona, however, rushed over to heal the child with magic. After a brief respite, they continued to, find, to travel and found a cocoon on the side of the path with an unconscious Lee somehow inside. Shortly afterwards, in the trees above, the silhouettes of a dozen figures garbed in animal hides, wood, and cloth appear. The figures bared blades as they drop silently to the ground, eyes aglow with hellish reds and yellows. Once again, they were led by the gaunt figure adorned in the skull of a unicorn and a tattered, fleshy cloak. All of the party pulled their weapons, creating a barrier between themselves, the silent faithful, and the children. And as the scent of rot reached them, the first of them would reach the team. A low, sonorous call of a nearby horn cut through the air. It seemed to resonate within their chest and eardrums, but outside as well, giving way to a previously unknown and primal fear. The figures all around them glanced in the direction of the sound, behind the party hissing as they turned to flee in scattering directions. One of them notably slipping over a ball bearing. The silent one was the last to flee never seeming to turn its body away from the source of the sound. 
As the party turned to face the sound, a blinding colorless light shot through the woods as the sound of muted hooves drew closer. As the light diminished, a wide and gigantic form stood before them. Their vision returned, giving way to details as the figure revealed to be a humanoid on horseback was clad in immaculate plate armor that gave off a slight glow. The armor was topped with an ominous fluted helm and the figure donned a remarkably intricate cloak that seemed to change color with the trees and constellations above. It took a few moments to realize the figure was mounted atop an unbarded creature, a wild horse with a long mane and a single bony horn protruding from the center of its head. The figure addressed the team in Old Elvish and asked, are you those that seek him? The figure then introduced herself as Ayaneros, the guardian of the roaming forest, along with her companion Eridon, the unicorn, the forest's original guardian. After a brief but enlightening and equally disheartening conversation with her, Yaneros offers for Eridon to heal the wounds and exhaustion of the party and then opened a portal toward the great gate. And we'll see if this will work. You guys enjoyed that. Did the audio come through okay for that? Yeah, it was awesome. Good. The words of Yaneros echo in your minds as you pass through the portal out of the wandering forest that she created for you. The words remember. You must give generously to the great gate. Travel quickly. Taking one last glance back, the team passes into the darkness of the hollow and begins their journey back through the dark tunnels all over again. The recollection and stress taking their toll in the form of five stress damage for everyone. Okay. So you are currently in the tunnels. Okay. If you recall, these are the tunnels that led you out into the roaming forest from the white tree. You did not enter back in at the white tree 
but Yaneros opened a portal that sent you back to this same place. Okay. Well, as Sudi walks along with the others, she occasionally casts a glowering glance over toward Wid. She pays you no attention. Is it clear which direction we're supposed to go in? Like there is only to... one direction to go. Okay, so it wasn't like we were popped in the middle. Okay, good. No. Yeah, you're essentially at exactly the point where you exited from the tree, except you are in the cave. Right. So, like, the tree has been replaced by this portal instead. Exactly. Yeah. Do we still have to go to the slime place? We don't know. Which place? The slime place? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can up the volume on this a little bit. What slime place? I don't remember a slime place. I believe she's referring to the slimes in the cave. That were lining the walls. Mm -hmm. Were you saying that in or out of character, I guess? Oh, uh, out of character. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Wid, yeah. Wid might not remember what you mean by slime place either, but. <laughs> no, like when, when uh, the, all the walls had like flesh eating slime on them. Gotcha. And Sister Caverns Fall attacked us. Which time? Yep, that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Gotcha. The first time? You know, we might think she's going to be attacking it again there because we don't know someone ate her. <laughs> what are you talking about? The slimes definitely ate her. <laughs> Madeline doing a service to us all. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, shall we? Uh, Wit is moving as fast as possible. Yep. Okay. Is it um, at a decline or an incline? It is yeah. at an incline. It was a decline coming here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. More work for them, Gans. All right. The journey through the tunnels takes another 10 hours. Passing the same dark tunnels, the same hellish passages once again I am so bored. the glistening living walls the gradual incline and after far too long the return of giant stone passages yeah, like 10 hours too long on the far side the final archway you emerge into the room of curios is that what they call it? Where you notice the absence of a particular spirit. And are the uh, bodies still around or are they gone? They are gone. Are the, the room is essentially empty. Sorry, what? Sorry. Uh, are they back up on the wall or are they gone? Um, the room is back to how it was before you arrived. Okay. Um, consensus to not touch anything and keep moving forward? Uh, yes. Cool. Um, is the ring back on? The, uh, the anything that was taken is not there. Okay. 
but if it was left in the room, it has been replaced. I think Mavly's still wearing it. Mavly, are you still wearing that ring? 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 Yeah, the one it, that... Uh, probably, yeah, but do, am I still wearing the ring? <laughs> remember yes cool and um yeah i believe you are talk to you or anything uh wait uh hold on uh i haven't tried talking to it uh mysterious ring of magical mystery <laughs> do you have anything to say to me look i kind of rhymed it it's kind of neat. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, shit. I, I imagine it probably looks fairly um, disturbing to see Mavly speaking to her ring. She has clearly lost her mind. No, it says that we actually need to slow the fuck down because if we go too quickly, then we won't have enough to sacrifice when we get to the end of the gate. We should have talked to it a long time ago. It also no, no. says that uh, we definitely should have listened to the sword more. So your ring wants us to sacrifice too? I don't know. All this stuff is weird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before we keep going, Nona, uh, can my sister be with you instead of Mavly? I know you've had a really rough history uh, watching kids, but probably you're better to look after her than Mavly right now. I don't know how you managed to insult both of us at the same time. Yeah, that's lovely. Why don't uh, why don't we leave her with Sudi then? I don't even know anything about this person. That probably is the best thing out of all of us. You remember her name though. That's pretty great. Progress. It's yes. progress, progress. Yeah, Pro progress. Progress. You wish um, we could carry that little baby? But uh, it's not a I baby, just, it's I, a I tiny thought, person. I thought you guys were old and wise, but if this is what we're arguing about, then maybe Sudi is the best option. <laughs> I know it's yours. Why don't you fucking carry the kid? Because I'm barely um, taller than her. Do you do you want to give your arms a rest and then I can carry her? Uh, sure. I'm gonna give the kid the ring. Okay. I can okay. carry a tiny person, although I should have a different tiny person. She glares at weird. All right. Um. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Is uh. I do recall that the um, out of character, out of character for a second, that the elf lady did cure the kids. Kind of, they they came out of their comatosis. Um, the the unicorn healed a level of their exhaustion, but not their their mental break. Okay. Okay. Because I do remember you saying that they weren't comatose anymore, but they, so they could like move and stuff, but, but they're not, they're still not there enough to like. Right. They're definitely not cognizant. Okay. So now less of a paralyzed person and more of a brainless soft. Mm hmm. Um, okay. Cool. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take the ring. I feel like maybe an adult should have the ring. Oh, no, then I'll keep it. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. You know, why did you give it to, if you're just going to take it back? Because I didn't think that you would try to take things from a baby. She's 12, right? A veritable baby. And you're what, 395? You're older than I am, Madeline. Age is nothing but a number. And you know what? She's been through a lot and maybe needed something adorable to just hold on to. I don't even know. You know what? I'm keeping the kid and the ring. Let's go. I'm going to march up next to Wynn. You're, you're taking her out of my arms. 
I never gave her to you in the first place. Uh, yeah, I think Natalie had the kid the whole time. Oh. Well, I wouldn't have tried to take the ring until after I had the kid in my hands. I thought that the trade-off had already been made. They're mine now. I'm going. <laughs> All right, you pass through the 30 foot square room with the six pillars. You see the same things from earlier, the small stone fountain near the far entrance, two wooden desks, one wooden chair, two mannequins, a dresser, and a pile of decaying fabrics in the corner. The long hallway brings you back to the sturdy stone door, which is closed came through this door at one point, sweetheart, and then we went through and we saved you. And as we were leaving, your beloved sister stabbed me in the fucking stomach. It was fantastic. Let's just keep going. Language, Madly. Lip and tummy. Thank you. You're welcome. The door is closed. Um, is it closed with roots like before? No, this is, you're not to there yet. Oh, that door. Um, wait, well, we wouldn't have been in the thing with the mannequin yet. because Oh, you're right. Happen. Yep, this is that door. This is the door before we get into that room. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, my bad. What yeah, door this is that are we door. even at? I don't know. No, there the are no roots. <laughs> there are no roots. The door is closed. Okay. Um... Should we like draw straws or? For what? Well, last time Quinn gave the door some of it, of her blood. And it opened. So should we draw straws or do you want me to just do it? Sudi so points toward wit. That one deserves to pay. Does Wid look like she can spare any blood? I think we're all healed. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. We are all healed. I bet you are healed. Yeah. Um, but uh, Wid will say, "I think we all deserve to pay at this point." Um, and she will uh slice the back of her hand and we'll give it to the door. Nothing seems to happen. Is there any your blood is worthless. Well, you're next then. On the inside of the on the inside of the door, there are no inscriptions. Uh, can we just push it open? Is this the push? Do we have to pull it open last time? I don't remember which door we're at. I guess this would be the the big one, like the one that didn't quite fit in its frame. Uh, yeah, is, this that, the, is that the, the one? Blood one the, that leads to outside? That leads yeah. to the mannequin yeah. room? Oh, yeah. We're in the, the blood. One leads, the one that leads to outside. The, the, the great gate. Wait, this is the one that leads to outside? Mm -hmm. Wait, okay. But you just said that it's not that one. It's not closed by roots. It, it, the roots are gone. Yeah, you, you, you broke the roots. It's no longer being held by roots. Okay, so we did go through the mannequin. We did room. go through the mannequin room. Yeah. Yeah, I just said that. I just read that. Yeah, but then never mind. Okay, I think we're all on board now. <laughs> they crawl in the same place. Yeah. Uh, can we just push the door open? Or I guess pull it open? Okay. Um you try to push the door open. And it does not move. Um, you try to pull it. There's nothing to hold on to. Uh, the the blood did it move? It did not. <sighs> we broke it. Is there dirt under the door frame, or is it in stone or something? It, it is a stone frame that is completely sealed. You, you don't see gaps except where the seal is. Like you can see that there is clearly, you know, it's meant to open, um, but it doesn't look like there's any gaps. 
Oh, uh, abracadabra. <laughs> Open oh, sesame. Oh, yes. Open sesame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as you, <laughs> as you say the words abracadabra, the door slowly moves itself open. I forgot. At which time I need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw as an old rusty slicing blade that rips out of a slot along the entryway slices at your legs and abdomens. Got a nine. If you recall, this is the thing that killed Sister Cavern's fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. And you forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so much has happened. It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> Got a 16. 15. Uh, we'd got a 15. I got a 19. Okay, so who got below an 18? Me, I think. Oh, shit. I think all of us so far, right? <laughs> Except good. for me, because I rolled an at, at 20, but I have a minus one dex. <laughs> Okay, so those of you who rolled below an 18 take 27 points of slashing damage. I am unconscious. How does that work with me holding the kid? I rolled a nat one, by the way. <gasps> um, you Are you sure you didn't 20... block it with the kid? <laughs> yeah, how, how does that work with the kid, Mavly? Why don't you describe that? Should have had the tall person carrying her. Hearing Abracadabra, Mavly turns and looks and she sees uh, the thing start to swish and she goes to jump out of the way, but carrying the kid, she gets a little tangled up. And as she turns to try to protect the child, she kind of fucks that all the way up. Uh, and as she's spinning, it it hits and, and she's looking at Quinn in horror as this giant swinging scythe just 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 cuts right into her almost saved sibling. And 27 points of damage will more than double the child's max HP, which instantly kills her. I don't see any of this because I fall unconscious. And, Matt and Quinn falls unconscious as this blade slices through Quinn, disemboweling her, slices through Mavly and the child, critically injuring Mavly, killing the child, slicing through Wid, slicing through Lee, slicing through Sudi, and slicing through Nona. If you passed, you take half damage, and you can describe how it is that you kind of avoid some of the damage. Well, I guess I was in the back and I saw everyone oh. die first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that looks terribly painful. I'm going to step out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so Quinn is on the ground bleeding out. The child has been severed in two. This is Pia, correct? This is Quinn's sister. So where's mine in all this? And uh, I don't Wid, Wid did. Wid would have protected her uh, to the best of her ability. I don't know if she still was injured since I didn't roll an at one, but yeah, I would say Wid, if you if you were intending to um, protect the child, I would allow you to turn your body in such a way that you took the full brunt of the damage. Could I use? Could I use 
my helm? Uh, no, because they were not the target of an attack. And I Are ask- you sure? Because look at them. I'm sure, yeah. Okay, and I couldn't, in a similar vein, I cannot react because we're not in combat, correct? This is a this is a saving throw, right? So it's it is a reaction. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're at the point where we have to decide who stays behind and who we try to save. Sudi almost screams oh. as she's cut and quickly gaps and holds the scream in. She stands up and slowly keeps walking forward, ignoring that someone thinks we should stop. Um, who is unconscious right now? Quinn, dead, mm-hmm. dead Pia. Quinn is bleeding out right now. Right. Who else? The Quinn's sister. Any and no one else is down. Nobody else said that they were down. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Um, how much was uh, the damage again? It was 27, 27 or 13 if you passed. Okay. Um, Mapley sees that Quinn is down and this kid is torn in two. So she's at this point just starts laughing. <laughs> like, oh, this is this is it. This is it. This is how this is how it ends. And she grabs both halves and then she grabs Quinn's unconscious body and runs back towards the sounds and everything that we were hearing from from back in the back, and she runs back towards the nameless god. Mavly, Mavly, stop. I'm gonna try and restrain her. Okay. Um, make an athletics check. And Quinn, please make... Actually, I will make a death saving throw. Okay. Where did I just put... Okay. I, as you guys are dealing with this, Quinn is lying on the ground, bleeding out. I thought she just grabbed Quinn. No, I went to pick up Quinn. She's still bleeding out. Oh, I thought you said you ran. Okay. Yeah, me right. with her is still bleeding because I'm not doing any cures. I'm just cackling and running. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 I rolled. This will be a contested roll, so it'll be strength athletics versus dex. I rolled a ten. Acrobatics or strength athletics for Manly. We will also try if Nona fails to um, to keep Mobley. Okay, so this will give Nona advantage. Uh, yeah, and Wid will cast Entangle if none of this works. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mobley. Are you, though? I don't think you are, but that's okay. Nobody I tried am. to stop Quinn from killing me, but that's cool. That's fine. Well, you're so much bigger than her, so I figured you could handle it. Oh, oh, okay. Upon being entangled and grappled, Mavly stops and sits and stares at Nona and shakes the two halves of the child and throws them at her. Did you contest or no? No, I'm not going to contest with all of that happening. Well, I... They said if none of that works. So I assume that they were. So something is going to work because I have one action. Okay. So my thing happens first. Are you guys just going for it or are you waiting to see if I can do it? Well, each action is separate and Mavly's response is a reaction. So Nona's action is to grapple and Nona's resistance doesn't cost, or sorry, Mavly's resistance does not cost Mavly her action. And then I believe she gets a save against Wid's spell. I didn't know if we were treating this like combat or if we're just, you know, trying to talk it out. But 
Um, yeah, so yeah, I guess it, do the contested roll first. Yeah, let's do the contested roll. And unless Mavly wants to concede, that's up to her. No, concession is fine. I'm happy to throw parts of things at Nona at the moment. All right. We're gonna we're gonna mark that as uh, three st stress damage right there. Um, just gonna throw that out there. See for you. Here's a bone. Okay. Um, and she's not gonna move when it happens. She's not even flinching at this point because like it's all so fucking awful. Um, why would you do that, Mavli? Actually, don't answer. I don't want to know. And she's going to go over down to Quinn and um, stabilize her with lay on hands. Maya, I messaged you. As Sudi moves toward the gate, she pauses, noticing that one of the remaining children is now no longer alive. She turns toward the last child who Wid is holding, steps toward Wid. I see your game, she says. You have the only child. You see that the other two are gone. You destroy mine, and I see you must have some way that you brought ruin to the other because you want to have the only child left. Sudi, leave Wid alone. She is our problem here. She no. destroyed my brother. Okay, okay. I think it was everything horrible down there that actually destroyed your Did brother. You see? Would Did you, you rather see? have less people right now or more people? Depends who those people are. Okay, walk it off, Sudi. Are the doors open yet? The doors are open. Uh, this is all happening while she's not even looking up. Because she's she's attending to Quinn. Uh, yeah, I mean, if if Wid didn't go after Mavly because Nona was able to, then um, because I was Wid was right at the gate, saying the word, uh, she would actually take the child and put it through the open gate. And completely ignore Sudi. Sudi grabs Wynn and twists her around to look her in the face. Sudi, walk it off. Sudi <laughs> twists her head back toward Nona and glares at her too. She doesn't see. She's busy. I don't know. Does the Leon hands work? Yes, it does. And, okay. Uh, so she's how, putting things much... back in. She's covered in blood. Wait, Leon hands, that doesn't recharge on a short rest, does it? Nope. You are out of lay on of hands, if you recall. I have four left. Four. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you were out. Okay. So how many are you giving to Quinn? Well, how many do I need to stabilize? I think I just need one, right? One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm giving her one to stabilize. That's the first step. So. Okay. Um, Putting things back in, stabilizing. Um, are we inside or outside of the gate yet? We're still um, inside. You're still inside. All right. So, um, does anyone remember how this gate works? Do we have to be, because someone just died and it didn't seal itself again, so I don't. Mavly shakes her head and just keeps walking further away from the gate. Sudi's grip on Wid's shoulder pinches harder. Mavly, we need you. We need you to talk to the Elven King, remember? You were going to like. Fuck off and die, no, no. She just keeps walking. 
That's what you're doing. <laughs> That's literally what you're doing right now. Which direction is Madly going? Back towards the area where we found the um, mithril shields and all of that. Okay, great. Uh, by the way, we'd um, put Pia outside of this area, so she's through the gate. Okay, is Wid also leaving? Uh, no, Wid is standing at the precipice, uh, okay. being held by Sudi. Um, Wid will let uh, Lee go through, uh, but we'll keep an eye on the child and her. Okay. Um, can I use my last divine sense? You can. All right, tell me if I tell me the location of any hallow spell, celestial, fiend, or undead within. You do years. not detect any of these. All right, we need to long rest now. I don't have any more. Uh, you can, no, you can long rest outside the gate. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a that was a no no joke. Um, Madly, don't you want to see your kids again? No response. She's not even, no. There's other things Madly's looking for. What are you looking for, Madly? Mm -hmm. Guys, she's not going to come with us unless we make her. Sudi? Uh, that's her choice at this point, Nona. I don't even know if we would have the energy to do that right now. Sudi, do you have the energy to go get Mavli? Yes. After I avenge my brother. Can you avenge your brother after we get everyone out of the gate? She pauses. And then her hand drops. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> she stalks back toward Mavly. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to take Quinn out of gate. Who's the left on my side? Oh, Wit is still uh, in the gate, basically, on neither side. Okay, um, so he's going to get Mavly. How far has Mavly gone? I imagine she's probably gone fairly far by this point. Yep. Well, it might help that Sudi's legs are longer. You do have more movement. That is factual. Um, can I still see them, though? I don't think so. No. Because Mavly went back into the tunnel, so she would have gone into the dark, and you wouldn't be able to see her. Well, they first have to go into the... There was, like, a path, and then there was the mannequin room, and yeah. then there was... The yeah, and the, path, the path goes around a corner, so... Okay, yeah. so she's on the path now. She's not in the tunnels yet. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you don't you don't know. You can't see her. It would be unlikely she got that far. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, okay. How close is the nothing getting? <laughs> Can we sense it? You can't tell. No, we won't be able to tell. Um but it'll get faster and faster, so we need to 
probably hurry. Wid, can you send like a message with like your dead bird? Uh, not with my dead bird. I would have to find a living bird in the area. Oh, that's gonna take some time. Um, does, okay. While, while we're waiting, why don't we talk through next steps? Okay, can I move Quinn out of the gate? Did I say that I was doing that already? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I assumed that, that you were already outside of the gate. I am in the gate and that Sudi and Mavli are still inside. If that works for everyone. It's kind of where I thought we were. So yeah. uh, is Lee and Sudi, what, what is Lee and Sudi doing? Uh, well, Sudi is chasing Mavli, right? Hmm. Not, not yet, I don't think. Yeah. She is. No one convinced her to hassle with later. <laughs> and Lee is through the gates uh, with her sister. With her sister. We went to check on uh, <laughs> Eon, gave her a once over, and is kind of attentively looking at those who are arguing behind the gate currently with a look of concern. As, as those of you leave, as you step into the light beyond the doorway, the cool air feels fresh and crisp. And the gentle sunlight is a warm, welcome change of atmosphere. Your memories suddenly have difficulty sorting what you actually have seen and experienced, leading you to question what was real and what was part of some horrible nightmare. Did you truly see any of those unimaginable horrors? Or was it merely a fanciful day terror brought on by lack of sleep? But the presence of Lee's sister with you validates at least some of your story. Quinn's missing finger. the scars in Lee's chest and all of your freshly injured legs and torsos act as mementos reminding you of a task that you're not sure really happened. So I will ask each of you between 25 and 50, how much sanity would you like to recover? What do we have use for sanity anyway? Well, once you reach 200, you die. <laughs> um, I'd like to know what sanity you are at. Yeah. Quinn, 185. Sudi, 100. Not out yet. Oh, you're not out yet. Lee, 188. Wid. Uh, Wid didn't leave either, but. Oh, you didn't I leave. I thought you left. No, no, no. No, she's literally like on, on the, the gate. threshold. Yeah. No, no, 166. At over 100 sanity, you are a danger to yourself and your companions. So, how much sanity would you like to recover? Quinn is at 185. I thought it was at 150 when you became a danger to everything. Oh yeah, one well 150 is when you like actively hallucinate and think that your friends are enemies and you attack them. But at, at 100, you don't feel like you're in the right mind. Right. Okay. Um, is it bad to say 50? No.
I, I just want you to decide how much of a relief this is to you. Probably 85. How much? Big. Um, 45. Sure, 45. Okay, Nona. Um, well, since her deal is she doesn't like darkness and this is like her senses are finally making sense again, mm -hmm. then I think that that would justify 50. Okay. Lee? Uh, for Lee, she's mostly just on mind with her sister, so everything else kind of barely has an effect on her right now. So I'd say, realistically, like, say 15. But, but ha having escaped with your sister, still alive, the only child that survived. And that, sorry, that's what we're, okay. Well, that would be a full of 50. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, yeah. okay. thinking the wrong thing. Um, okay, yeah, easy 50. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, as you leave, the door begins to close. Ah, oh, fuck. Lid and Sudi. Uh, Sudi, the door is closing. Really loud. Well, we're on our way back now, I think. Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> I guess Sorry. we'll dash. Who, who, who is we? Uh, Sudi and Mavly. Is Mavly coming back? Yes. Okay, Sudi's so very you can persuasive. See, you can see in the distance that the door is closing fairly quickly. Uh, wood turns into bear form to kind of block it from closing all the way until they get there. This door is like 30 feet high and it's closing, <laughs> closing through magical means. You get the yeah. impression that it would crush you. Yeah, but why not fully safe? So Sudi shouts, "Why does the door close?" I don't know. Hurry up! Um, abracadabra. We don't want it to open. <laughs> well, we want it to stay. It'll. It closed on its own the first time. Why wouldn't it close on its own the second time? Did it close on its own, or did it wait until Sister and Kevin's full? It's closing I now. Wid and yeah. Tess don't remember what happened the first time. So cool. <laughs> the first time I'm meaning the just way. now. It's closing now. It well, is closing. Yeah. So okay. and we didn't do anything to close it. So if we open it again, it'll probably do the same thing. Okay. This is all coming out of Nona's mouth very fast. She's like, I can make sense. God damn it. No made her, damn it. Um. Yeah. Uh, Wid stays on the inside if the door is moving that fast. Wid. Wid, please don't let stay on that side. With you're the one who's supposed to stay with the kid, remember? Kid is out. My job is done. Your the job isn't done. The kid's the door not is home. closing. Last chance. Hey, do we make it Are out? Are we going to make it, Z? I would like Sudi and Mavly to make athletics or acrobatics checks. 
Okay. I'm gonna lose my fucking shit. Oh, I pick athletics. That's much better. I got a net 20 making it a 23. Okay. Are you doing anything on the way out as you pass Wid? Why would you give her that opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she stops right after she passes Wid. Just on the outside? Yeah. Okay. 16 Z. Okay. That is good enough. Both of you get outside. Last chance, Wid. Nope. Okay. Wid! The door slams shut with a deep resonating crash. The seal of magic that would otherwise seal the door does not ignite. Uh, in all of your minds, you hear Wid's voice. My payment will not be enough. You need to bring more to really seal the gate. I don't know how you will do it, but it is needed. But I will put the Band-Aid on. Uh, and Wid will, um, she's still in bear form, but she will slash open her own gut, wait until she bleeds out, turns into a human, and then do it again, or turns into a dwarf, and then does it again. Right. As blood spills over the great gate, the air seems heavier. Breaths become more labored and tears are shed. Yet beyond that, you notice no discernible change. Have the last of the ancient magics within this place been expended? Was this sacrifice for naught? Is it only a matter of time before dark, inescapable horrors emerge from within? Nothing seems certain anymore, except for your slow footsteps, one after the other, as you step away from the gate and take in the crisp air in long, deep breaths. And Sudi have a... Uh sanity increase because her brother's killer died for nothing yep uh roll a d10 why did that keep clicking? um sudi you also get that 25 to 50 option okay well i got a four from the d10 okay so, so you take the four, and now you have a 25 to 50, depending on how relieved you think Sudi is after having gotten out. Uh, six. Okay. Well, 25 to 50, minimum oh. 25. Uh, in that case, uh, 31. Okay. Okay. So... Hopefully you remember those numbers that you gave me. Those numbers directly correlate to the magnitude of memory loss which you experience. 50 means you don't recall most of what happened. Yeah, that, that tracks. 25 means you get flashes of most of the things that occurred, but you don't recall them accurately. When somebody died because of some out of your control event, you remember it as somebody in your group having murdered them. I mean. Who that person is, I will leave to you. Um, Maya.
Hello. Hello. A figure. Oh, you. I'll let you read it. Give me half of a second. This is gonna be. Just gonna do one thing. A figure stands behind you. As you turn, you recognize the face of Edie, alive with tears in her eyes and a sad expression on her face. Oh, it's so good to see you all. Where's, where's Wade? Where have you been? Uh, I didn't make it out. Um, but, but I'm so glad to see you all again, even for a, a brief moment. I, I don't it is good to see you here. Wid uh, got what she deserved. Sudi, what do you mean? That's disrespectful, Sudi. I'm going to ask you to not say that ever again. Thank you. I'm so sorry for not being there to help, for not being there to protect you all. I'm sorry, Edie, where did you say you've been? Dead. And you're still dead? As far as I know. Okay, what is everybody else's reaction right now? Just complete incognition on Nona's face. Uh, blood gurgle is what Wit is doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, Wid is Wid is absolutely dead. <laughs> um, Sorry, Wid. <laughs> it's the only one you can be sure of at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if we did the full memory loss thing, does that mean? But we we still do we still remember Wid dying the way she did? Uh, you would probably you would probably remember that that she was a person and that she died but you don't remember the circumstances of her death. Even well, I, I think you would remember, her? no, no, I think you remember Wid because it like just happened. Yeah, I feel like since it happened after we left the influence of Inside yeah. the Gate. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more referring to like stuff that occurred inside. Okay. And we heard her last request still at least, right? That's the one that, even if even if events are hazy, I feel like the last. Uh... Yes. Yeah, I see to the sequel. <laughs> Go find the mead. <laughs> that, that was the real quest all along. <laughs> Getting booze. <the> solid... <laughs> it's just a, booze. It's a booze run. We had to go through all of this for the good shit. Damn. <laughs> it's worth it. Good. Sudi looks back at the door and seems uncertain about something. I should have my brother with me, she says. Oh yeah, you you only lost 31. I, I think you remember, Sudi probably remembers um, Wid being responsible for her brother's death. She's trying to connect the pieces. Yeah. You have flashes of the memories. It's not, it's not like, it's not like what happened in the roaming forest where the memories were gone. Like you, you have the experience, but it's more like, oh. um, it's more like trauma blocking as opposed to actual loss of the memory. Different facial expressions yeah. streak across her face. Mm -hmm. Has Pia's state changed at all? Probably slightly better. 
So does she have some semblance of consciousness behind her eyes right now? Yes. Okay. Lee would notice that and be kind of just checking her over again and looking intently at Pia and uh, she's crying and trying to shut out hearing what, what else is going on with uh, Sudi and comments about Wid. And Edie. An Edie. <laughs> and, yeah. The fuck? She's keeping an eye on Edie. She doesn't trust Edie right now. Maya, you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> um, can I uh, cast uh, uh, Cure Wounds on Quinn? <gasps> <laughs> Madly, you go fucking milk bathing son of a dwarf. <laughs> you see Quinn wake up or gasp breath as she does have some help to her and she she looks around to make sure that maybe her sister is or is not here and and she stabs madly again hold on hold on are you in it's any solid. condition to do that Let's find out. I haven't rolled cure wounds yet. <laughs> yeah, somebody else did though. <laughs> oh, never mind. All right, I don't have to cast cure wounds then. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause She's you for a been second. In my arms. I'm, I'm gonna pause you guys for a second, and I'm gonna have Maya <laughs> go again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for not making it out with you. And I have to say you, but I want you all to know I'm proud of you. All for trying and for all you went through. And I will miss you all very dearly. Please don't let him come back. Please don't let him come back. Let who come back? Then, if you'll go ahead and do the next part there. Uh, as you stand before Edie, you detect the faintest trace of copper as the sad expression twists into a sharp smile and the sad voice descends into a wicked cackle. Z, I'm very bad at pronunciations. She says, Danich oyer dovois parsu wichma. Do not fear, more will seek him yet. And in a single swift movement, the figure jerks its head violently and retreats in the mist. May I interject as a player for half of a second? Please. It is an absolute honor and pleasure to tell this story with you all and be part of it with you all. I'm not signing off right now, just, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say genuinely Thank you all so much for such a fun game, such a wonderful story, and go kick some ass. Thank you so much, Maya. You did a great job as a silent one. Thanks, guys. He is looking around with a degree of confused hope, as though maybe people who die in there come out somehow. <laughs> okay 
let's go into the actual epilogue. Oh, maybe. The journey to Ilmater's Hope took six days. The snow and the unseen dangers lurking beneath it forced you to take caution on the journey back. Though thankfully, the snow also made the task of tracking sources of food possible. Upon return to the village, you learned that your journey took 10 months to complete. Villagers scoff at your presence and scorn the names of those who left on the journey. This winter has been the harshest in recent memory and none expected the party or missing children to return, having been gone for so long. From what you can gather, Ill Matters Hope endured a food shortage. And with their children missing, many had simply given up the will to live. Many gave in to despair, choosing to take their own life. The church, still under construction, has long since been defaced. It's clear that the village felt forsaken by the gods as its halls were vandalized, its windows broken, its ornate features traded for food or else melted down and repurposed. The remnants of the structure are now well known as an opium den, where those seeking an escape can have their wish briefly granted. News of the party's presumed death traveled far. And on two separate occasions, search parties were sent to find traces of them. Only one of the search parties returned, claiming to confirm their ultimate fate. The reward for proof of their whereabouts expired three months ago. Similarly, an interested party visited Ilmater's Hope searching for them. A human with a unique arrangement of scars and tattoos and a set of crooked glasses. He left a note at the inn. The note has since been lost, but according to the innkeeper, it contained condolences for the heroes on their losses and suggested that they should return home to live out what time they have left. The note lacked a signature, but its edges were stained with a black powder, perhaps coal dust. Okay, so I asked each of you to prepare, uh, for those of you who survived, to prepare um, kind of an epilogue for your personal character. So um, I would like to go through each of you and allow you to kind of narrate what your character does um, in the immediate future. So, I will start with Chrissy since she and I have already discussed a little bit of this. Um, okay, yeah, so um, I wasn't expecting a ton of memory loss. So I'm trying to figure out how that would flavor how things would go. So I have the, the shield on my back as proof right? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like um, so Ellie has kind of become what other people would call a senile old woman. She rambles about things that most people don't understand. But the thing that matters most to her that has always matters mo matters most is more than her family is her word. And so of all the things that she may have forgotten in behind that awful gate, um, her promises are the one thing that still burn brightly in her mind. And there were two promises that she had made. Uh, one was a promise to um, 
the uh, guardian of the wandering woods to like seal the gate and and bring bring the um the shield to the elven king and the other was to Loriac saying that she would free her from her prison so um she and whoever else is anyone else coming to the king the elven king she and whoever else wants to go if anyone um will be going to the elven king um and showing him the shield and telling him what we know okay so i don't know if you want to tell me what happens after that see or if there's like you want me to add anything else nope let's let's go through everybody and okay. and i'll i'll do something at the end all right okay. abby okay so um sudi returned to the desert where her family is but she's not the same person she doesn't recognize some of her family members and she often flies into a rage and is caught muttering things about how the world is absolutely terrible and should just be torn asunder and replaced with something that's actually decent it's very difficult to for those who loved before to understand her or to even live near her. And she, off, she later begins living at the edge of her village with her violent temper and difficulty with other people. Uh, Nancy. Okay, so... Uh, upon coming back, uh, Lee and Pia go back to their home and find out that uh, their mom had gotten in some kind of accident after drinking herself uh, into a stupor and has passed away. Uh, and their stepfather claimed ownership of their home and basically refused to acknowledge Lee and Pia and kind of angrily chased them out kind of thing because they did not have a good relationship prior to this. Um, so with Lee and Pia not having a place there anymore, uh, Lee takes Pia and starts falling back into her old um, habits of brawl fights, but starts doing so with some drinking and uh, essentially starts working as uh, a mercenary, mercenary and starts doing that as work. Um, in order to keep a roof over the head of her and Pia, and that's primarily kind of in and out of inns and where they can find rest. Um, if uh, she was if she was approached by Nona or someone else at the end of the story, uh, they would consider going somewhere. But I feel like I would need to RP that a little bit because Lee's. Um, intent is to watch Pia and she's also not in a very good mental state. Also with memory, um, since she doesn't really remember much that happened and also she had lost any positive memories of her mom uh, in The Adventures, um, she is uh, just not in the best mental place and uh, starts drinking like her parents before her <laughs> but is Olympia. Right. Well, when uh, so um the only promise Quinn had made to herself was to search out and find her sister dead or alive and and to bring her home. Um so, 
just beginning by waking up and knowing that she was unable to fulfill that promise to herself. Um, she left her family that was in this current town to trek back home to her parents um, and break the news there. And because of all the stress and memory loss, Quinn spends many years at home with her father trying to rebuild those memories and trying to find that missing piece she knows something is missing um so she just she spends time at home trying to rebuild memories and um and trust and happiness and uh she goes on she goes on small adventures close, very close to home, um, into the wilderness though, so she can reconnect and see that wonder and beauty. Um, and she starts to, over the years, she starts to uh, do these crafts and these, um, these things to remember uh, the group of people that she spent this this amount of time for that was crazy and scary and dark um but she she would do things over time just to keep their memory inside she's so afraid of losing memories and people now so she she starts she starts knitting socks um and she starts uh she starts um, trying to carve creatures out of wood um, and she starts trying to boss little kids around uh, <laughs> and she tries to be a little more sassy to her parents and she she's kinder to spiders and she watches them walk and tries to learn more about them and become more friendlier with them and and she does meditation and she tries to remember to meditate but then also on the flip side of meditating she rages not against anybody but against things um so she does that for many years at home with her parents before she can finally feel comfortable to adventure out and um maybe go back to the town and see how they're faring and see if there's anything she can do to help as she matures and grows. All right. Avli. What? <laughs> that was like the sweetest epilogue I've ever heard. Good job, Juliana. Right? Sure. Super excited to follow that as the crazy person who, um, uh... When Mavly left, she didn't recover any sanity whatsoever because she she failed in every way possible, literally all of them. She always knows what direction the gate is, and she occasionally wanders around whispering abracadabra, abracadabra, and looks to the horizon and hopes to see something. But even this god let her down. So... She starts wandering, doing the things she's always done, repairing various, you know, uh, churches and, and artifacts and whatnot, and putting in new installations. And she always happens to add a little bit extra for the silent one, a little bit extra for the nameless god, very, very small bits here and there on various works. Uh, and, and she will occasionally catch somebody's eye and whisper to Havlik Ma and hope for the best. But no, she definitely doesn't follow Nona. She does occasionally do Tai Chi, though. Awesome. After, after one year of being out, those of the silent faithful begin to hear whispers deep within their minds, calling them back to service. 
whispers in their mind saying that the time of rebirth has arrived and he is near. And you feel the call to go back to the gate and open the way to release the nameless God onto the world and usher in an age of destruction and rebirth. And that is the end of our campaign. Congratulations to the two of you who survived. The only people who survived were Nona and Quinn. Ooh. Oh, fuck, that's right. Ah, oh, shit. The rest of them were replaced by doppelgangers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Not and, surprised. And of course, <laughs> and of course Wid killed herself. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... So what happens with the Elven King, though? Um, he would probably turn you away. That's probably it's best case scenario. Doppelganging. Yeah, best what? When did Sudi? <laughs> when well, she was. Do you want one, to tell him, Sudi? That one late yeah, night, early that, morning. That one night when um, she mistook Lee for. The silent one, I attacked her, and then um, Sudi, uh, Lee did not want to have watch with Sudi more, so Sudi went back to sleep. And then I think Quinn was on watch with her. I think so, yeah. And I'm Quinn fell asleep because she always luck. does that. <laughs> and then 